Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. In today's video, we will have a look at a very interesting cipher. But before we start with the topic of this video, I would like to ask you a favor. I have a lot of viewers that view the video, but don't interact with the video. And this is really important for YouTube. So if you don't mind, it would be really nice if you give a thumbs up or leave a comment below this video. Thank you. I structure this video into three different parts. In the first part, I want to give you a small background of the syllabary cipher. After that, we will have a look at the syllabary cipher in detail. And finally, of course, we will do it in Crypto 2. We will have a look at a newly implemented component that implements the syllabary cipher. Before we start discussing the syllabary cipher, it is good to have a background of the cipher. And what actually is a syllabary? And in the linguistic study of written languages, a syllabary is a set of written symbols that represent the syllables, or more frequently, moras. And moras are basic timing units in the phonology of some spoken languages, which make up words. Here on the right side, you can see such a set of syllabaries. And this is from Friedman and Kelly Mayers, and it was declassified only a few years ago by the NSA. And the Military Crypt Analytics is a very interesting book, so I highly suggest that you have a look at it. You will find it on the NSA's webpage. William Friedman and Lambrus Kalimeos present in that book a syllabary cipher or syllabary square that you can see here on the right side on page 250 of the book. And the American Cryptogram Association, ACA, also defines the syllabary cipher as part of their list of ciphers. And I came in touch with this cipher when I read a blog post of Klaus Schmee, who is a friend of this channel and a crypto blogger and crypto author. And Klaus Schmee mentions a cipher that he at that time calls the crypto number table and also presents a challenge on his online blog. So if you're interested in solving such a challenge, you should have a look at Klaus blog. And the crypto number table that Klaus presents on his blog is in fact also the syllabary cipher. What is the syllabary cipher? The syllabary cipher uses a 10 by 10 table that contains letters that are marked here in red, syllables from a given language, in our case it's English, and digits which I colored green. And the basic ideas of that kind of cipher are to suppress letter frequencies and to remove word patterns by different spellings of same plain text words in the cipher text. These two properties that we want to avoid using the cipher can be used to attack substitution ciphers. To encrypt a plain text, the text is replaced by digits, coordinates found on the top and left side of the table. So let's have a look at this table. You have digits on the left side going from 1 to 0, and you have digits on the top of the table also going from 1 to 0. And then inside this table, we have 100 cells. And as I said, they are filled with letters, syllables from a given language, and digits. And now when you want to encrypt a text, you have to search for the appropriate text part or syllable letter digit that you want to encrypt and then you replace it using the digits. For instance, the A is encrypted by 1 1, the 1 here is encrypted by 1 2, the AL can be encrypted by 1 3 and so on. So you always go on the left side of the table first, take the digit that you find there, then you go onto the top of the table and take the second digit. And here are some examples. So, for example, hello world 1 can be encrypted by 53, 65, 65, and so on. And as you can see, the HE here, the syllable HE is encrypted by 53. The L is encrypted by 65. Again, the L is encrypted by 65, and so on and so forth. And the nice property of the cipher is that you also can encrypt digits. For instance, the 1 here is encrypted by 12. 
Now let's have a look at another example. We want to encrypt the word secret. And you can find different ciphertexts encrypting the same plain text. For instance, you could encrypt secret by just encrypting the letters S E C R E N T. But you can also use the syllables. For instance, S E is 89. Then we need to use the C because we have no syllable C R or no bigram CR in the table. Then you can encrypt the RE here, the syllable is in the table with 83. And then you have one T left that you can encrypt with 93. So there are a lot of different possibilities to encrypt a plain text to a cipher text. This makes the cipher more difficult to break. And to decrypt a cipher text, you have to look up the plain text element using the cipher text symbol as coordinates. For instance, when you have 89 here, you just go to 8, then you go to 9, and you know this has to be SE. Now let's have a look at keying schemes, and there are three different keying schemes also defined by the American Cryptogram Association. The first keying scheme is to keep the table, so don't modify the content of the table, and modify digits on top and on the left of the table. And this is based on a digit key, for instance, one, zero, and so on. How do you do that? You just take the first 10 digits and write these into this row here, one, zero, two, and so on. Keep in mind that you can only use a digit once. For instance, if you would use two times a one, then eight would be 81 and SE would be 81. So you have to use each digit only once. And you do the same on the left side of the table with the 10 remaining digits. You just write them into the table from top to bottom. And so you have permuted the digit key, and this also permutes the assignment from digits to the content of the table. Then we have a second keying scheme, and that is keep digits up on top and left of the table, but reorder the table or the content of the table based on a keyword. So you write your keyword, for instance, 8 secret 1, keyword 5. You write here 8, then you can use S, E, C, R, E here, T, and so on. And you keep on writing your keyword until you have fully written it into the table. And then you fill the remaining parts of the original table into the new table. And that is how we, you could permute the table based on the keyword. Of course, you could also completely randomly rearrange this table, but with a keyword, it's easier to memorize. Then we have the third keying scheme, and that is modify the digits based on a key and reorder the table, for instance, based on a keyword. This is actually what we've done here with this table. We have reordered or modified the digit key here, the digits, and we have reordered the table. So this here is created using keying scheme three. Now let's have a look at key space sizes. The first keying scheme reorders the digits on the left and on the top. For the left, we have 10 factorial possibilities to assign digits into these cells here. So we have 10 factorial and on the top we have the same. So our key space size for keying scheme one is 10 factorial times 10 factorial. And this is about two to the power of 43.58. In the second keying scheme, we keep the original digits, but we reorder the content of the table. If we would do this completely random, we had 100 cells and we have to put 100 elements into these table cells. This is also factorial. So this means we have 100 factorial, which is about two to the power of 524.76. So the reordering key space or the amount of possibilities to reorder the table is very huge. And then we have the third keying scheme. And here you have to combine both keying schemes and key space sizes. So we have 10 factorial times 10 factorial times 100 factorial. And this is about two to the power of 568.35. So in fact, this cipher here has a very, very large key space when you use the third keying scheme. Now that we know how the syllabary cipher works, let's encrypt and decrypt using the syllabary cipher and 
I use the new nightly build 9361.1. Yes, we have again nightly builds. We got a new software signing certificate and you can now download new nightly builds and test new things we implement in Crypto2. I want to show you now the syllabary cipher here and I want to create my own workspace. To do so, I click here on create a new workspace and go to the graphical editor. And then I search for the syllabary cipher. I drag and drop syllabary cipher onto the workspace. And then we need some text inputs and text outputs. First of all, we need a text input for our plain text. And I will open the component here because it nicely visualizes the table that the syllabary cipher uses. So this was wrong. This is right. This here is the plain text. Then we need the digit key. Call this digit key. And then we can also apply a keyword. biggest width and then we connect the keyword here but we will keep these empty at the beginning then we can use the original English table then we need an output and I want to have a syllabary cipher here for decryption we connect the two inputs here makes the workspace a little messy maybe we can now the <laughs> it decides to route these outside of the workspace, but it's fine. Then we have another text output here, and this will be our decrypted plain text. We move these here. And then we need a cipher text because we want to see the cipher text here. text. And then I have an additional output that we will use later, but I will also connect it here. Now let's first just encrypt a test message. Let's encrypt hello world. And as I said, we don't use a digit key and we don't use a keyword. When I press play now, the component automatically generates the table here. It encrypts our plain text. And of course, it should D3 is probably HE. So we have 53, this is HE. Then we have 65, 65, these are the L. Then we have the 74, this should be the O, and so on and so forth. The component now automatically also uses the biggest syllables it can find to encrypt. So it will omit to encrypt to an H and to an E if you have HE. In your table. You can change this behavior. Let's first add a little more plain text. Hello world, this is a test of the new syllabary cipher component. And as you can see, with all the, as with all the components in Crypto2, it automatically encrypts live when you are still executing the workspace. And as you also can see here, it uses the standard digit assignment and it uses the standard table. Now let's have a look at the settings. For that, I stop the workspace. So you have two actions here, of course, encrypt and decrypt. And then you have the possibility to change the table language. And we provide tables in English, Italian, French, German, Spanish, and Latin. I obtained these from the Friedman book, the English table, and the other languages I obtained from a document from the American Cryptogram Association. Then we have the encryption strategy. What is the encryption strategy? The encryption strategy is the way how it encrypts your uh, plain text. You have two possibilities. You can choose the longest n-gram. That's how it is set up now. And you can choose random. Random means that an EST here, for instance, could also be encrypted by an E and ST. When we have ST, we have ST here in the table, or it could be encrypted by E, by S and T. It could be encrypted by ES and a T, and so on and so forth. So let's change this to random. 
And every time we now restart the workspace, we get a different ciphertext since the component randomly chooses the substitution elements here, the ciphertext elements. And of course, we always have the same plain text because all these different ciphertexts that we generate can be decrypted or are in fact the same plain text. And of course, as with all the classical ciphers in Crypto2, you can um, define how to handle unknown symbols. I ignore these. That means, for instance, the space symbol is not part of the table. It is just forwarded here to the text output. We can remove these also. Then we don't have any spaces, but I like it the way that we have the spaces. So let's ignore these. Now let's have a look at how you can key the syllabary cipher in Crypto2. As I said, we have three possibilities. We can key or change the um, assignment of the digits here. We can reorder the table and keep the digits, or we can change both. Let's start with the digits. I just enter all the digits from 1 to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I copy these. When I just execute this, we get the original key. What we can do now is we can reorder by copy or cut pasting parts of the key. And when we restart it here, you can see that we reordered our key or our digit key here now and the table accordingly changes. Now let's remove this key and let's enter a secret keyword. So for instance, five secret 70. And by the way, you can write also lowercase. It automatically um, changes this to uppercase internally. And six. And when we now press play, you can see a five secret 17 or one seven key word six and so on. And of course, you can also change both keys. So we have here the digit key is changed and we changed also the content of the table. And yeah, this is how you apply different keying schemes to that cipher. Now, I previously said that we have this text output here and you wonder why we need this text output or how you can use this text output. And this here, in fact, is the table. I thought it would be a good idea, for instance, when you want to create challenges or you want to describe how the cipher works in the documentation, it would be useful to have the table output. So when you press play here, this output here gives you a formatted version of the table, a text version, and you can just copy it and use it in your documents. And of course, it changes based on how you changed the keys. It also live updates. This is one output possibility of the so-called table output connector here. But we have a second option here, and that is you can change this here, table output formatted is the table output here, and then we have crypt tool substitution key. And when we use the crypt tool substitution key format as output, we get a crypt tool substitution key. What does this mean? This is an ordered key in the format that the workspaces with the substitution that we have in crypt tool 2 with the substitution component can use. So you could copy this text here. Let's, let's open a, key, a workspace using this key. So we go to the start center, we search for substitution, and then we have substitution, where is it? Uh, homophonic cipher and nomenclature decryption. I want to decrypt. Now we can copy the key here into the keying uh, input here. We can copy cipher text. And when we now press play here, it can also decrypt our cipher text using the key here that I just copied from the syllabary cipher workspace. And how does this work? You have here on the left side of the semicolon, you have the plain text element, for instance, a zero, and the zero is encrypted by 07. The one is encrypted by 58, the two is encrypted by 73, and so on. And you can scroll through this, and the key is always sorted by plain text symbol. And I think this is also really handy because you can create this way also keys for the standard substitution component. Yes, 
And this is everything that I wanted to show you in this video. First of all, I gave you an introduction to the very interesting syllabary cipher. After that, I showed you how the syllabary cipher is implemented in Crypt22. You can now use it in Crypt22. It's available in the nightly builds. And you can encrypt and decrypt using this component now with different languages, with different keying schemes. Also, if you're interested in solving these or ciphers like this, I uploaded, or we are in the process of uploading five challenges to Mystery Twister. Mystery Twister is our uh, cipher challenge contest. I will also link Mystery Twister below this video. And on Mystery Twister, you find cryptographic riddles. And I created five different riddles that will be published within hopefully the next weeks. And then you can try to also break the syllabary cipher. Yeah, and as I said, this is everything I wanted to show you in this short video. If you like it, please give a thumbs up. Also, if you did not yet subscribe to this channel, please do so. This really helps us to grow the channel and to make Crypto 2 more popular. So, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.